Yeah, so let's go ahead and, and get going here. Um, I'll kind of kick things off an intro. Um, we uh, have four members of the SESG team on stage here, and then um, TJ from ARC. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through just sort of a series of questions that Sam and Jared are going to fire at us, um, maybe fire some at TJ as well. And then um, th that might take us through sort of the first half of the AMA. And then all the time, um, those of you that are out in the audience, feel free to send questions in the questions channel um, so that they can pick those up and uh, fire them at us along the way. So no question is out of bounds. Um, this is an ask me anything, which means truly anything. Um, Alex just mentioned that he'll probably be doing some juicy airdrops. So um, keep an eye out for those um, probably in the questions channel, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, quick introductions. I'm Steve Schechter. I'm the CEO of Starcard Sports Games. Um, most of you probably that are listening know me. Um, Alex is with us. He's the community manager. Um, so if you've had any kind of challenges or questions or anything like that, you've probably interacted with him. Um, he also serves as kind of a technical PM, um, really jack of all trades. And then we've got two new young bucks that are with us, uh, Jared and Sam. Um, Jared and Sam are both university, uh, they're both students and they are interns with us this summer um, and, and uh, both learning quite a bit, but also bringing quite a bit of value to us and helping us with various projects. So they're going to be here um, firing questions at us. And some of them, they might know a little bit of the answers to, but some of them, they truly don't. So they're they're curious themselves. And I've asked them to put some questions together. So um, and then, of course, TJ is with us. TJ is the, um, the CEO uh, of ARC, and um, he's with us. And we may have Enigma, who's an important new member of the ARC team, um, an advisor and uh, joining as well in just a little bit. So that's who's who. Um, I think uh, that's about it. Um, we we just so that folks know one piece of information regarding team. We've added just recently several new um, fantastic people to our advisory board. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about our team, go to the. Uh, the SESG website at starcardsports.games. You can read the little bios and their LinkedIn page. Uh, everybody here is fully doxxed and is accessible. You can communicate with any of us. You can communicate with our advisors, uh, our team, et cetera. So, um, all right. I think with that, why don't we hand over to Jared and Sam? Unless, TJ, if there's anything you want to just add as a quick intro before we get going? Um. No, not really. I mean, I'm just excited for this partnership and uh, welcome to the team, Jared and Sam. Take it away, guys. Cool. All right. So I guess I'll get started with the first question. So I'm sure a lot of people are excited about the Legends program and what it can do for StarCard sports games. So are you able to share any updates with how um, things are proceeding in that regard? So straight away, right, right to right to. Yep, with the legends. <laughs> and right away, put me under under the gun. All right. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Here's 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 the latest. Um, we have we have one deal that is completed, um, and we have held off on announcing it uh, because we've decided that we want to announce multiple legends together. We think that that will have um, a lot more impact. Um, I think that announcing you know three or four at the same time is going to actually attract sort of press coverage that that we aren't having to pay for or promote um, and will will really make news and make waves and bring attention to us. Uh, um, whereas I, I think that just announcing the one might not do that. So we're holding off on announcing that one. That being said, um, we are close with several others. Um, and uh, I, I, I've been told I'm allowed to share some of the folks that we're talking to, um, that that's okay. Um, so we're in discussions with um, guys like Roberto Carlos. Um, he's represented by Entourage Global, um, who is now in the mix here. Um, we're uh, Kaka, uh, Wayne Rooney, uh, Ashley Cole, um, Francesco Totti, uh, Michael Bollock, uh, Patrick Kluivert, uh, Zico, um, Ronaldo, and just to make sure that we're clear, we're talking about the 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 legend Ronaldo R, R nine, uh, the Brazilian, not not CR seven. 
um, since he's still he's current. So, and we are talking to a few current players also um, through Entourage as well. So um, they include uh, Luka Modric, uh, Gigi Buffon, and Mizuto Ozil. Um, so there, there are about a dozen guys that we're going down the path with. They're at various stages. Some are much further along than others. Um, I would say our goal is to try to complete deals with at least three and as many as five, um, you know, and, and to, to have those completed in the month of July. So, so that's our, that's our goal. That's our plan. Um, we, we would love to do deals with, you know, 10, 15, 20 legends. Um, I think that's the long-term plan, um, really to do deals with all of them and for this to be the home of all legends. Um, but, but that's sort of where we are in terms of, um, capital and preparedness, et cetera. Um, so it's, it's sort of, you know, the first three or four that we get good deals with are going to be the first three or four. So. Wow. I mean, hearing all those legends, it really gets me pumped up for, you know, the project moving forward. So, uh, I've seen a few images and video clips shared recently, and it's pretty exciting to start seeing actual development going on. So could you give us, uh, an update on game development? Uh, yep. So, um, I, first off, I don't even know if the community knows us because I don't even recall if we've shared this in the discord. So this may be totally new news. Um, I can't recall. Um, we have made a big decision that we're going to shift from mobile first to PC first. Um, and there, there are a number of reasons behind this. Um, it does not mean that we are writing off mobile. Um, in fact, we're, um, Janai team is now doing the builds um, with the architecture and the planning that we're going to mobile next. Um, so, uh, which does obviously increase our, our dev costs a little bit um, to, to enable us to architect for both, but we are planning to launch a PC first. Um, we just made this decision about a week ago. Um, we, we did this now because if we went further down the path with de development, it would have been very costly to switch um, and to go PC first. So um, we needed to make a, a decision sort of now at this stage uh, based on where we are in the development. And and essentially, Janai team came to us maybe two weeks ago and said, um, you know, full disclosure here, there are risks associated with going mobile first. Um, Apple and Google, both of their, their Play stores or app stores are uh, apparently coming down hard on um, crypto related apps and projects. Um, you know, they, they want to get their cut, their 30%, um, which is massive. Um, and, you know, obviously crypto um, projects uh, seem to evade their, their normal payment processes because, because they are on the blockchain. Um, and they're not happy with that, um, full disclosure. And, and so they're, they, they are clamping down and probably going to be clamping down. Um, and Janai team basically said, look, if you go mobile first, um, either you're going to need to put in place mechanisms to share 30% of the revenue with them um, or um, or work around them and take risk that that they literally could unplug you. So, um, so for those reasons, we did make the decision to go PC first. There are some great things about going PC first. Um, you know, the, the product can be significantly more hyper-realistic, if you will. Um, so the quality of the game can be at sort of at the highest level um, that, that those of you that are gamers know. Um, so that's really cool. And I, I'm really excited about that. Um, so that's, that's a strategic shift um, that everyone should know about. Um, as far as the, um, the product itself and where they are, Janai team has actually started doing the development of the environments. Um, so 3, 3D um, modeling, um, interiors and exteriors. Um, they are all but done with the Green Pavilion, which is the main hub, if you will. It's sort of the starting place for the game. That's where the Arc Bank will be and where all players will need to go um, to start. And they'll need to go um, to do various sort of DeFi functions within the game. Um, and that's all but done. So we, we've shared a couple of probably 2D um, iterations of this. And we'll we'll be sharing um, the 3D iterations and and at some point soon. Um, the ability to sort of navigate around um, within that structure. And then they're also working on um, the entire hub, um, meaning the the stadium, um, the stadium plaza, which is in between the pavilion and the stadium, 
um, the farm, um, the Hall of Fame building. Um, uh, let's see, what else can I say? They're, they're uh, in addition, uh, Janai team has started doing um, hyper-realistic 3D model of our first legend, which is really cool. Um, so the, these uh, these avatars uh, of the legends are going to really look like them. Um, and uh, so we're really excited when we announce the the legends that we'll be able to like share. I, I don't know that they'll have all of them done when we have the first three or four legends, but they'll certainly have at least one of them done. Uh, which is going to be pretty cool. Um, we're adding the ability to um, actually play against the legends avatars in the game, and this is this is new. Um, so so the legends will serve kind of as bosses, if you will, um, and players will be able to challenge them and take them on. Um, that's just one small aspect of the game, um, but it, it's pretty cool and and interact with the with the legends as well. Um, trying to think what else I can share. Um, the game story um, is uh, that development has started as well. Um, so uh, this is going to be a very cinematic game story trailer um, for for those of you that are that are looking at game five projects. There, there's a game story trailer that's out there that is drawing a lot of attention that everyone is thinks is incredible, which is the Star Atlas one. Um, and, and we basically told Janai team this is the bar we we want to we want something that's going to be cool like this. Um, and they've started the development and shown us the first uh, scene, um, which I think we've shared. Um, maybe Alex, I don't know if Alex <laughs> yep, I, shared I, just, I just dropped it in the AMA questions channel. Okay, cool. So, cool. So Alex, actually along the way here during this whole thing, maybe you can share assets whenever they come up, et cetera. So yep. um, this is um, this is being done in Unreal Engine 5 um, using metahumans, you know, so um, so if you look at the, the facial features and, and stuff like that, they're, they're very realistic. Um, this is going to be very cinematic and dramatic, et cetera. Um, obviously it's going to be a big marketing piece for us, um, and, and sort of tells the story, uh, behind the game. Um, and we'll share bits and pieces of, of progress on that in the, in the coming, coming months. It's probably going to take a couple of months, uh, for that to be completed. Now that's, so. that's cutting edge, Steve. That's, that's a huge deal. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty exciting, and and the uh, the the apparel and the sort of fan stuff that you see in that trailer um, ties into the game. Um, some of the NFTs um, ties into some of the co-branded product with the uh, legends and with Paula. Um, so it, it, it's all going to kind of hook together uh, in a cool way. For instance, you you'll see in the game that the players are wearing the Aurora kit, um, which is this imaginary wow. team, this imaginary club. Um, in the in the game, both in the game um, and also in the trailer, and then obviously that's one of the one of part of the Paula series NFT. So so uh, we're super excited about what it's looking like so far. Yeah, a lot of great developments. Yeah, yeah. This is all. I mean, this is so cool, and that actually brings me to my next question, which I think you just talked a little bit about there at the end. So I mean, with the Paula radar NFT animations, I mean it's on a completely different level compared to other simple art NFTs. And I'm curious if you can just talk a little bit more about the NFT development and how that's going on this side. Uh, sure. Um, so we, we, as I think as folks know, we've kind of, we've, we've paused a little bit, you know, the market is tough right now. Um, NFT sales in general are muted um, right now that th there's no getting around that. And that's the truth. So, um, we decided that we would pause a little bit, let the market take a breather, et cetera. But it also gives us an opportunity to, to, to do a couple things that gives us a chance to develop more of the NFTs. Um, obviously we're, we're really excited about launching on the arc, uh, marketplace. Um, so it gives us time to sync with them, um, on our plan. Um, so we're, we're, we've shared the, the actual balls, um, um, Alex, maybe you can drop those for anyone that hasn't seen these, if we've got new folks, um, just to see what these look like. So the, these are the first, um, NFTs that are, that are going to drop. Um, we've developed, uh, an ad, um, a piece of collateral, um, that if you're, if you folks are on Facebook and Instagram and other social channels, you might start seeing this, um, soon. Um, Alex, you can even share the, that ad. I think that's fine. Um, so if you if you've got access to that, you can drop that as well. Um, we we think that that's going to be really really cool. Um, the devs are working um, on models for um, the rest the the shin guards, the beanies, the jerseys, the scarves, the hoodies, 
Um, all of these NFTs will have in-game, both in-game and out-of-game utilities. So, um, and and they'll all be tied to fat matching physical products, which is very unique. So, our you know the the NFTs that we're doing, I think that not only are they going to look at really really cool, and the animation is really cool, um, really at a different level than a lot of NFTs that are out there, but they have diverse utilities. You know, they're not just like, um, oh my my shooting power in the game is better. Um, that's just one of the utilities. Um, you know, they, they also, you know, you're getting matching physical product and um, you're getting boosted APY when you stake SCSG tokens, um, uh, et cetera. So, so there are a lot of in-game and out-of-game um, utilities. Cool. And can I just follow up on that? What are we thinking about in terms of launching the first NFTs? What are you thinking about in terms of like a date or what the first NFT might be? Yep. So, um, so we're coordinating that with with TJ, and and I'll also TJ feel free to jump in here as well. I mean, we we've we've we may be doing this as soon as like a week from now. You know, around the middle of the month, doing the first one, limited, very limited quantity. Um, uh, uh, they're going to be ERC seven twenty one. Um, uh, we're thinking the first will be the uh, diamond ball. This is new. Um, so. Uh, I don't even know if we've shared artwork or have artwork to share yet on the diamond ball. We have the emerald, the ruby, and the sapphire, but we're doing something really exciting um, with this first one. And we thought the first yeah. one should be, should be like big time. So the the, the diamond ball is going to be um, 100 balls only. Um, the the ruby is 500, and then they go up um, because remember these are utility within game. Um, so the quantities have to be have to be pretty heavy. Um, and, and this is going to be, you know, very broadly, uh, known. So, so we have to have a decent supply, um, but the diamond ball, they're only going to be 100. Um, and it, uh, basically, uh, the utilities for these include not only all the things that I've just mentioned, um, but the owners will be able to, um, will be able to join an in-person event in London. Um, it's a two day event um this fall um and the participants will be able to attend the photo shoot with the legends um and watch the photo shoot they will then be able to hang out afterwards at a meet and greet and mingle with the legends um all of the holders will get a, a gear bag with every single one of the Paula products um so they will have um a radar ball a hoodie a scarf um a beanie um a jersey um, uh, ball, et cetera, uh, that they can get the legends, uh, to do, uh, signatures on autographs. Um, after the photo shoot, um, that will be on a, on a Friday after the photo shoot. Um, there's going to be a cocktail party, um, fully paid for. Um, then, uh, we're putting everybody up in a hotel in London. Uh, and then the next day, a uh, hundred tickets to go to either, uh, Arsenal Everton, um, on the third, uh, or Man United Arsenal on the ninth. Um, that that's the that's the plan. So, so th this these one hundred balls we think are going to be in massive demand. Um, and oh, and yeah. um, it's a it's a once in a lifetime kind of experience. Um, we're really excited. We think it's a good way to kick things off. Tj, Tj, anything you want to anything you want to add to that? I mean, um, well, yeah. And as you said, Steve, I mean, we're, we're ready whenever we decide, uh, the technology is ready and we just got to get things locked in and yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It, it, we're going to pull up a hundred deep to a soccer game. <laughs> it's it's going to be it. incredible. Love it. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's the plan for the first one. And then, and then they will basically just roll from there. You know, um, um, we, we, we obviously we're not going to do, uh, legends NFTs until they're done and they're announced. Um, we want to give the legends time to, um, you know, to share with their fans, et cetera. So those are probably coming another month, you know, four, six weeks, something like that from now is my guess. Uh, but we will start rolling out more of the Paula series um, and the Aurora fan series um, just over the course of the next two months. Just keep rolling them out, basically. Wow. I mean, it's super exciting just hearing it out loud. Um, so I know that we postponed round two because of the market turned down. 
So are we still planning to do uh, another round? And if so, when? Uh, so this has been a, a source of sort of debate. Um, we're, we're, you know, I think that everybody knows that I've been communicating regularly in the Discord and taking feedback from our community. Um, we're truly running this as a community, you know. So um, we've got some very smart people in our community, uh, people that are really excited about our project and and invested in it. Um, and so we're we're listening to you. And and I I think the feedback has been, um, you know, do round two if we need the additional capital. Um, but you know, let's, if there's no reason to do round three and round four, because we've gotten to where we need to get to, um, then no reason to do them. And I, and I agree with that. You know, I, I, I don't see any reason to, um, dilute ourselves and, and, and increase our circulating supply more than we need to, if we have the capital that we need, um, to be successful. So as, as of right now, um, and obviously th this can, this can change if, you know, whatever the circumstance change. But as of right now, the plan is um, that we will do round two. Um, the plan is to uh, sell 25 million SESG. Um, we're looking at doing, um, you know, uh, probably probably a little bit higher than what we're anticipating um, for round two because we're going to forego round three and four likely. So we may be doing that at something like six cents. Um uh, and then, and then launching when we launch an index, we're still targeting ten cents. Um, but you know that that will enable us to raise over a million dollars. Um, I think that we're going to have a ton of tension at that point. We're gonna we're not going to do that until after we announce the legends uh, and do some heavy PR. Um, so so that should be that 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 round two should be um, you know even with the market conditions, um, it's going to be so limited uh, and the attention I think is going to be so big. I think that's going to be very successful that that round. Plus we're going to obviously start having revenues. So so I think that we're going to be fine from a capital standpoint at that point and uh, hopefully just forego round three and round four. So that's, yeah, the, think, that's the plan. I think you guys will be in a good position for sure. Yeah, yeah. We, we are just short term. Um, those of you that are in our Discord regularly know this, but those of you that aren't, don't. Um, short term, we are doing a small raise uh, because we didn't do round two. Um, we are doing a, a small private raise um, of 400K. Um, we literally hammered out a deal in the Discord, in public, for everyone to see together as a community. It was amazing. Um, I've never done anything like that before as an entrepreneur. Um, and we just went back and forth. I, I proposed some things, got feedback from folks. Um, and we came up with a structure for a, for a short-term raise um, purely for um, initial payments to the first four legends. Um, uh, and that's a four, so it's a four hundred thousand dollar raise. Um, it's really kind of structured like a debt with warrants deal, um, which I've done before in my other companies. Um, meaning that those that participate are it's a loan; they're actually paid back. Um, and then, as opposed to warrants, they're getting tokens. So, so they're paid back. Um, they're paid back with the interest, five percent interest. Um, so, four hundred twenty k is going out uh, with the four hundred k that's coming in. Um, the payments are required uh, contractually to go out from the first revenues that come in. Um, so, you know, hopefully, hopefully we bring in more than 400k in revenues in the first, you know, couple months. Um, so this should go right back out to those folks. It's fully transparent. Everyone can see the sales totally. Ex so no one has to wonder or guess: Have we done 400k yet? Um, it's going to be paid out weekly. Um, so we're not going to wait until we have $420,000 in sales. It's just going to go out each week to those, those participants. Um, and the participants are getting 10 million SESG tokens, um, in the aggregate. Um, so, so if you're doing 10% of that 400 K, you're getting 10% of that, that 10 million, uh, in SESG. So that's out there. That's happening. Um, 280 K of the 400 is, is committed. Um, still looking for 120, if anyone is listening, is interested. Um, but we do, we're also talking to a bunch of people. Um, so I, I anticipate that this will get wrapped up quickly. If somehow we don't get to 400K and we're just at 300 with this, we'll, we'll just, we'll just sign the first three legends, um, and, and we'll launch with three. Um, cause I, I think three is enough to get us that big attention. Um, I don't think one does, but I, I, I think three, four, five does. So, so that's the plan, um, right now. TJ, what do you think? Um, 
I think it's awesome that you guys hammered that out right in public, right in the Discord. Uh, that that's huge, and it speaks to the kind of community um, that you're building. And uh, I, I think three legends will definitely be sufficient. It it's incredible for me. For me, I, I've been a, a CEO and an entrepreneur for for decades now, and I've I've had multiple companies. This is my first crypto venture. Um, and I got to say, I, I can't imagine ever doing something that isn't a blockchain space again. The, the, the community, uh -huh. the, the community, it's, it's crazy. I mean, um, you know, the, the way that I could just interact with the community and they're part of the project um, is amazing. Um, and in terms of ideas, in terms of, you know, um, constructing deals, et, et cetera, it's real time. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's completely different. It, it's so much fun. Um, so anyway. What what else we got, gents? Any other any other questions for me before we turn over to to folks uh, that are sending us questions? I think between Sam and I, I think we have one more. So let me just get this out. Um, so I I know that we're planning on seeing significant revenue in Q4 with sales of Legend NFTs, the Aurora Seven Twenty One series, and our Metaverse lands. Um, I was looking at another project that seems to be building a high end play to earn fantasy adventure game. Uh. So they're called Alluvium, and they just launched their metaverse plots last month after the market downturn. And they sold they sold out twenty thousand plots in three days, and brought in seventy two million dollars. So knowing what we're building and the legends that we're bringing in, it left me really pumped for what we have coming. So I'm curious if you can tell me just a little bit more about what our plans are for the metaverse and for everyone here. Cool. Yeah. So we we haven't talked a lot about the metaverse, and we haven't focused on it um, a ton in the Discord and. Um, in previous AMAs, et cetera. Yeah, the, the, what, what Alluvium did last month is incredible. I mean, June 2nd, um, a after the market has you know re really gone down a lot and everybody is depressed and fear and greed index is at like 10, they announced their first uh, metaverse land sales. Um, and, and credit to them, they're, they are building a really cool um, game. Um, it, it's not like... You know, this is not like an Axie Infinity type game that's just pixelated little characters. That they're building a legit, um, cool game similar to what we're doing. Uh, obviously, not in the soccer space, but um, yeah, the fact that they sold twenty thousand plots um, in three days at you know an average of like thirty five hundred, thirty six hundred bucks each, um, and brought in seventy two million dollars. Uh, obviously, I mean, th they're they're set just with that for their development probably in perpetuity, I would think, and and tons of marketing, et cetera. So um, it's exciting. That, that, that That's encouraging. I, I was shocked. Um, I think that we're doing, you know, something that, that really parallels in some ways. I mean, obviously we're in the soccer space, but we're building a high-end, um, um, you know, RPG uh, play-to-earn game. Um, I think that we're doing some things that are more exciting than what they're doing, right? We're partnering with these football legends, which is going to get a, give us broad global attention. Um, they, they have to go out and get attention um, through more traditional marketing means, et cetera. Um, and, and I think that the football vertical is probably the biggest or one of the biggest verticals in the world. Um, so I, I can't help, I mean, I can't help but just be incredibly excited about this. And, and the, 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 our inventory or our supply that we're going to be offering is a tiny fraction of what they're doing, which should mean that we have even more value um, than what they did. I mean, they, they sold 20,000 plots. I think, Jared, did you say that they're doing 100,000 plots, like eventually? Like, is that their long-term plan? Yeah, the total rollout is 100,000 for the for so, total and 20,000. Yeah. So, so they're doing 100,000 plots. Um, <laughs> just to put that into perspective, we're doing about 200 plots in our hub, uh, just to get, just to give a little context there. And then each of the 16 cities right now, we're planning about a hundred in each. So, so we're talking in total, maybe 2000 plots compared to a hundred thousand plots. Um, so, you know, I think these are going to fly. I think they're going to, they're going to go for big bucks. I think there's going to be a massive secondary market. Um, I think that brands are going to want into our metaverse. Uh, particularly sports and soccer brands, but other brands as well, you know, food and beverage brands, et cetera. Um, I think it's a massive opportunity. And, and you know, there the, the, the are things that you have to look at when you're investing in metaverse real estate. You need to look at, you know, what you're getting. Um, you know, are you getting um, a plot of land that you're completely on your own to develop 
um, with, with no support, no help, um, and something that is sort of like a pixelated, um, you know, experience? Um, or are you getting something that is easier to monetize um, and more elegant? Um, and we're definitely offering the latter. So so is Alluvium. Um, but, you know, unlike, you know, some of the, the big players like Decentraland and Sandbox, et cetera, we're, we're offering, um, we're, we're focusing on how can our landowners monetize and, and we're going to develop tools like an SDK to help them to monetize. Um, or we're going to provide partners that can help them to monetize, whether it be um, uh, third-party advertising platforms so that they can sell advertising on their plots um, to brands, whether it be uh, partners that that help build out virtual storefronts um, to to drive sort of the new wave and the, the, what the future of e-commerce through sort of avatars, um, those kinds of experiences, which is really exciting. Um, we also are um, looking to bring in-game mechanics. So um, one of the attributes of players in the game is going to be um, your stamina or your endurance. Um, and players will slowly um, run out of stamina as they're playing. Um, and the way that they get more stamina is by visiting any of the real estate plots and getting food and beverages um, uh, to increase their stamina, which increases their ability to compete better. Um, you know, in our game. So, so in-game mechanics that actually drive um, value to them that they don't have to do anything for. So, I think TJ, it's so hard to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just saying. I think it's so hard to even quantify the the opportunities here. Um, I mean, we're we're gonna have obviously the primary sales with all the NFTs, NFT tickets, um, but then secondary, like you were saying, all the different venues within the metaverse, everything built on top of the the metaversal plots and i just i think there's incredible opportunity here and we're you know we're really preeminent in this space yeah yeah it's exciting stuff and and as far as timing we're we're Janai team is starting to work on this um i i anticipate that metaverse plots are probably going to be in um q4 so so it's not happening um now um we we want to build up you know, significant exposure and traction, et cetera, and and, and then sell the metaverse plots. Um, th these are these are going to go for big dollars. And some of you out there listening probably are fortunate enough that you participated in the the private round and are getting a free metaverse plot if you maxed out on your on your investment. Some of you, uh, this is probably good news for a few of you folks that are already out there. What else we got? Anything else? Maybe, 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 maybe some stuff for, for TJ and for ARC and, and then, and then open up to some questions. I don't know if folks have been sending in questions. Alex, have there been, are there some questions that have come in? Yep. We've got a couple. Um, yeah. I've answered a couple in uh, the chat itself, but I think uh, one yeah. that makes sense is how close are we to the farms being fun functional? Oh, okay. Um, T TJ, do you want to take that or? Do you want to speak to that or do you want, what do you think? Absolutely. I can, I could speak high level broad brush with that. Um, as far as the farms being functional, um, we're working on the engine behind that right now. And the engine that's going to be powering uh, everything we're developing with StarCard. Um, so I, I can't give you an exact timeline to that right now as that's not public. Um, but I can say that we're making the final touches on the, the engine that, that's powering our ability to create contracts for StarCard. And once that's done, um, we'll be able to pump out contracts at an exponential rate. So TJ, can you just elaborate? Because probably a lot of people know about the, the ARC reactor, but I don't know if everybody does. So when you say working on something that will help to expedite smart contract development, can you do you want to just share a little bit about that? Um, yeah, for sure. So... Using the Arc Reactor, um, teams of developers and us ourselves developing these contracts for StarCard um, will be able to pull any contract off of Etherscan and understand it instantly. Um, because there's there's a lot of hours lost in trying to understand the code and organize it and uh, work within each individual function so you don't break the overall contract. Um, but with the reactor, that's one of the things it does. It'll, it'll generate a diagram to where we understand every single component of code we pull online. 
um, and then we'll be able to to code much faster by not having to type at all. Uh, there's countless hours lost just typing hundreds of lines of code, making manual edits. Um, yeah, the list goes on and on. But with the reactor, you'll essentially be able to have a, a, a library of different inputs where you just press a button and then you might type a certain variable or just a number and uh, it'll code hundreds of lines of code for you on the spot. Um, and then, I mean, you, you take those two things and you combine them and it overall leads to a much faster development time. And, and that's kind of what a reactor does. So. Cool. Yeah. So I, I got to see, I got to see sort of a um, firsthand look, you know, just privately. Um, and I readily admit I'm an old man and, and I am not a developer. Um, so, so it had to be dummy down a little bit, but, but once I saw it and it was dummy down for me, um, I, I definitely got it. It, it looks very cool. Um, and you know, speed, speeding up development means dollars, right? So yeah, um, we're, yeah. we're doing for web three, what Squarespace and, and, uh, WordPress did for web two. So that's really cool. Very cool. What else? Great. Um, what yeah. Else we got? So, uh, Shaq, another one uh, for you. Um, this is something that we've talked a little bit about, um, but any plans to leverage the World Cup uh, this fall mm. or winter, our time? Um, or are you of the mindset that you want to avoid association with the World Cup due to uh, the human rights issues that have kind of come up with the entire process being in Qatar? Yeah, I mean that the, this World Cup is controversial. I mean that like I I know people that are that are like I'm not watching the World Cup, um, even though they're huge football fans because they're 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 pissed that they feel like Qatar basically has bought up, bought the World Cup. Um, they feel like it's they're not a football um, nation. Um, that there has been exploitative labor in constructing stadiums. Um, there's massive ESG concerns, right? So I mean, it's I think the average daily temperature is like 100 degrees. Um, and so cooling stadiums and cooling facilities, et cetera, is a huge ESG concern. So there, there are a lot of people that are unhappy about the World Cup. Um, it'll be interesting to see like how well attended it is and, and how well watched it is. Um, it, I, I admit as a soccer fan, I, I can't not watch, watch World Cup matches. But um, as of right now, there are no plans um, to do anything specifically with, with the World Cup. Um, we are exploring with ICM Stellar getting some tickets to some really high profile events um, like Champions League, um, FA Cup, um, maybe World Cup, et cetera, as um, giveaways at the uh, kickoff event in London. Um, so you'd have a one in 100 chance of getting, for instance, you know, FA Cup final tickets, um, et, et cetera. Uh, just to bring even more value, even more utility. So obviously, we'll, we'll outline all of the utilities for those um, before they launch. Um, and maybe those might include World Cup tickets. I don't know. But but anyway, we don't have any um, specific plans to do anything with the World Cup. Um, it is huge news in soccer, and it's a big event, of course, in soccer. And um, you know, So I'm sure there'll be lots of chatter and stuff in the Discord about scores, et cetera. But no, no formal plans. All right, nice. Um, one more question for you here um, from the legend Sam Malone. Um, has Janai team given us any sort of time frame on now that we're going to PC, how much longer it would take after that release to um, develop and then release a mobile game? Um it, not really specifically, other than to say we're investing more so that we're more ready to launch mobile. In other words, th they're building and architecting in with in mind constantly, this needs to go to mobile. Um, and, and that is going to cost us more. Um, but it means that we can go to mobile faster. The question I don't think is going to be how quickly can they develop um, – um, you know, sort of in parallel and how quickly we can have the product. I think the question is more um, what's going to happen with Apple and Google? What's the future of, of um, uh, operating systems, you know, platforms um, for play to earn games? Um, will there be other 
other platforms that will actually take hold and be legitimate and um, be able to, in a way, compete with them. Um, will Apple and Google back off of the 30%? You know, I mean, 30% is, I think is nuts. Um, will they back off of the 30%, you know, because the, the, they're going to lose um, projects that are that are simply not going to use, um, you know, are not going to do game find, play to earn um, high-end games um, in their ecosystem. So I think that's more the question, um, more than, you know, more than will we be able to have it ready um, soon after. If I had to guess, and I'm totally guessing here, um, I'll bet that that um, we launch beta on PC um, and beta being the hub area and initial mini games, um, maybe end of this year um, or very early 2023. Um, and and again, I'm I'm guessing here. Um, I'll bet that we're not on mobile for like a year after that. Shik, can I just uh, comment in here for a moment? Yeah. So I think one of the things we kind of gloss over here, and it's a new narrative for everybody is really this is again where we have the power of the arc reactor coming in we the dragon where you can actually do the same thing that you do for web-based code also for mobile yep. so we're going to be also able to help check completely reduce that trajectory once we have uh, arc reactor and dragon live so we're not just talking about going out and grabbing usable code and immediately understanding how it works because you spend so much time trying to figure out what that code means, how it's going to break, what these functions mean. That's over. The Arc Reactor will diagram it out. You'll drag in what the functions that you want from our ready library, and you'll be able to do that with Dragon, which is our version for mobile. So we'll be able, once these products are released, to actually help accelerate all the aspects of these processes. Not as to yeah. mention, we're going to be re-releasing a lot of ARC products that you know and love better than they ever were before, faster than we ever could because of the presence of this technology. And then we're going to give this technology to everyone else. So so that's huge. That's that's big time alpha right there. Um, and, and I actually knew it. Um, I actually have seen it. Um, but I didn't know that that was able to be <laughs> shared. So, um, <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think yeah. I think we'll be able to expedite your timeline with the mobile game. Yeah, that that's that's awesome. Um, and I um, just for the folks that are listening, I actually got to see this too. Um, I just didn't know that that uh, I didn't say anything because I didn't know that that uh, that that was able to be talked about. So that's really cool, and I think that's big time alpha for. Everybody I just to... want to mention, you know, there's a lot of hard work going into this. This is very complicated technology. One thing that we've really learned in the trajectory of going pretty fast, as fast as we can, is to slow things down a little bit. But, and, you know, George has been amazing in the company as well as helping us to put structure in place, make sure we're testing products better, that we are going through multiple iterations of testing to ensure that the products that we are delivering are quality assured and impeccable, not just releasing for the sake of release. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and great. ensuring release for you guys goes smoothly. Music to my ears. Speaking of, speak, speaking of George, Shek, I've got a few questions from you, not as an ARC member, but as an investor, if I may. Yes, let's hear it. So obviously the concept of buying an advantage in a console or video or pc game is is not new um call of duty i probably spent hundreds of pounds on call of duty um however um the concept of having some form of DeFi um system involved is a little bit more complex do you foresee that being an issue with being able to convert people to these types of games with you know the staking sort of uh, system in place or is so yeah, I mean, part of the whole goal here really is to introduce DeFi to non-crypto people, um, which is really exciting. I mean, for those of us that just love this space, um, this is what GameFi, not just us, but this is what GameFi is going to do. It's going to take a, a 17 year old kid playing a soccer game and basically introduce him to and educate him about DeFi, but doing it in fun ways that are that are part of the game mechanics. So I'll give you one example. 
um, in the game, uh, a player will win SESG tokens um, if they're successful, you know, in a particular mini game. Um, they will be able to go back to the hub, teleport back to the hub from a city um, and walk their avatar over to the farm, um, purchase some, uh, purchase a sapling, a small tree um, with SESG tokens. Think of that in, in the in the world of staking as a deposit fee. Same thing. That's all it is. So purchasing a little sapling with a very small amount of their CSG, find a spot that's open on the farm, um, plant their little sapling. Um, and as they've planted it, what we've done is um, we have now staked their CSG tokens um, as if they had gone to ARC uh, and staked or as if they'd gone to our, our site and staked SESG tokens using ARC's um, uh, smart contract technology. Um, same thing, but in a visual way, in a game way. Um, That's gamification. So, so, that, so the kid is the kid is doing staking, um, and and he doesn't really necessarily understand, you know, all of the complexities associated with um, all the friction associated with with DeFi and stuff, and that that kind of exists in the space today. He's just doing DeFi while playing a game, and then and then if he comes back, you know, a week later and walks over to the farm and walks over to his tree, he'll see his tree grew a little bit. This tree will be a little bit bigger. That's simply a visual representation of the rewards that he's earned since he staked. Then at any time, he can harvest his tree in the game. Um, when he harvests his tree, all that's doing is withdrawing from the, the, the stake, from the staking pool. That same function, but doing it in a visual and fun way. When he does that, um, a contribution is being made to one tree, to, to an organization that is planting a physical tree in the real world. Um, so we're tying in like social, you know, positive social impact, um, you know, around the functions um, that really make sense. And that's just one example. There are going to be lots of different examples that where the user feels like they're playing, they're doing certain things, visiting an ARC ATM in Madrid and, um, you know, uh, taking out or you know, do, doing various swapping, et cetera. The, all of that is, those are DeFi functions that are happening within the game that help them to play the game and, and as, as part of that experience. George, I, I, that was a long rant, but is, is that kind of where you're going or what you're wondering about? Yeah, no. So, so essentially looking to almost GameFi DeFi. The, hence the term GameFi. Amen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay. Exactly. Um, so yeah. that leads on to my second question, if I may. Yeah. And my second question is, you mentioned PC and mobile, um, but as you're aware, obviously that sort of the, the migration of traditional video games, which have been around for decades, is there a plan to be able to try and take on the might of the console at any stage? Um, potentially, um, potentially, but but it, it's um, it, right now in terms of broad adoption, um, there are more people in the world playing games on mobile, uh, P PC second, and console third. Um, it, it, I'm talking about globally. You've got to remember all, all the people that are in developing nations, et, et, et cetera. So, so console would be the third priority after mobile. Uh, yeah, fair point. And my last question um, is obviously with regards to the your NFTs having so much utility, which is amazing, by the way. Um, where do you think from an ethical standpoint that stands from playing a computer game where someone with a considerable amount of money can own a considerable amount of NFTs and hold a considerable advantage over a developing nation? Over uh, over someone that's playing in a developing nation. Um, I, I, I mean, the, the bottom line is the players are going to be able to earn NFTs and earn SCSG by playing. I think that what we're doing is we're creating mechanisms for people that are in developing nations to actually empower them. And, and I mean, you hear stories of people in the Philippines playing Axie Infinity and making, you know, 10, 12, $15 a day. Um, to, to some of us, that, that doesn't sound like anything, but um, there are thousands, there are stories of thousands of people in the Philippines that have quit their jobs and are just playing Axie Infinity because they're making more money playing Axie Infinity than doing hard labor. Um, to me, that's that's empowering. Um, and so I, I think that we're going to yeah. enable that, but do it in the sport, in a sport that they absolutely love. Um, do I think that, that George, that you're, you're going to be better able to afford a Paula Radar Ball and Diamond 
um, than someone that's in a developing nation. Yes, that that is a reality and that is a truth. And I think it's, um, you know, that that person is going to have to uh, play longer and uh, et cetera to win enough SESG that they can do um, the same thing. You have an advantage um, as a, as a, I don't want to say wealthy person, as a person in a developed country. Um, but I still think that we're raising the bar for everyone around the world. No, you absolutely yeah, are. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. What else have we got? Alex, Any anything anything else in the questions channel? Nothing new. Nope. You answered them all. Well, well I, 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 I just wanted to add something. Well, um, yes. I, I think it's huge, you know, what we're doing and, and how we're building a platform that not only is going to empower everyone around the world, but it's also going to teach the next generation of kids around the world to take control of their finances, to understand DeFi, to understand decentralized narratives. And um, I, I think it's an awesome mission. And if, if we see it through to its, its fullest potential, we're going to empower an entire generation of kids. And that's that's something amazing. Yeah, and there's there's nothing that attracts um, kids more than sport, you know, and and soccer in particular around the world. Um, yeah, I think that we have we have an opportunity to reach a lot of people. Um, I think I see Sam Malone is typing. Is he sending a question, or do we have any others? Maybe that's it. I mean, we're coming up on an hour here, so um, maybe just give a second here in case anyone has any sort of last minute questions and and then um, and then I, I'd say we could wrap up. Good Sam, Malone's type, Sam Malone is typing and I'm thinking he's he's either coming up with a great um, meme or he's got a cool question. All right, is there going to be any real life advertisements or just internet based? In terms of marketing, um, I imagine. Oh, I'm guessing. Okay, so uh, Sam, maybe just confirm by saying yes or no here when I when I ask this. Are, are you talking about um, when you say real life marketing things like having um, New World Football Alliance or Star Card Sports games on the jerseys of professional players in real life, um, billboards in real cities, um, or in um, transit systems, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, I, I think that um, there aren't plans in the short term, right? So there aren't plans here this quarter. Um, I think that our first push is going to be leveraging the um, the the reach of the legends. Um, strategically, that's how we're going to become known, and the um, the 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 press I think that comes with that and the attention that comes with that the you probably the YouTube influencer coverage that comes with that all of that um, you know uh, but but you know long term if we have a war chest and we build a war chest and we think that it's advantageous for us to um, utilize that war chest for some of those kinds of purposes you know we will we'll make those decisions together as a community you know I mean I, um, we're, we're we're all in this together and and we're going to make those together. Some of those things I don't fully get, you know, spending a hundred million dollars to rename a stadium. I don't know how much value there is. Frankly, it's over my head. I've never done that before. Um, so my, my sort of my knee jerk is I'm, I'm wary of those kinds of things, but, um, we'll see. And we'll, we'll make those decisions together as a community. Awesome. Got a couple more. Do you want to answer them? Yeah. 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 Let's go. All right. Um, how can someone use the owned lots, like the the metaverse plots in the game, to advertise various interests, um, companies, events, etc.? Yeah. So, um, so there are a number of different things that can be done um, for, uh, from things that are as simple as just uh, branding. So, so if if you are um, a space on the street. Uh, on the way down the street towards Piazza del Popolo in Rome, um, you could simply have your company's brand as just a just a logo. So it's just branding. Um, that's probably the most simple um, and the easiest uh, to implement. There's really nothing to that. Um, and and I would say that ranges all the way from there to um, to actually using some development 
um, and using an SDK to build out like a virtual store, um, which, which means, which is really the future of e-commerce, the, the ability to, um, for an avatar to walk into your space, um, walk around your space, pick up a product, turn it around in three dimension, um, walk up to the counter and check out and have that physical product shipped to them. Um, so tying into a, a, a back end, like a, a Shopify or something. Um, so that's the whole range of possibilities. Um, doing the latter involves um, investment from the landowner, right? So um, the landowner needs to have a developer or a partner or a company that does that development for them. Um, so there's an investment in doing that kind of thing, but we're going to enable that kind of functionality. Um, McDonald's, for instance, has announced that they're planning to launch 10,000 McMetaverse restaurants. Um, these are restaurants where people, we in various metaverses, so they'll buy them across a lot of different metaverses, where people will be able to walk into a McMetaverse restaurant, um, order food in what looks like a McDonald's, uh, and <laughs> and the food will be delivered to their house, you know, similar to an Uber Eats kind of model from the nearest McDonald's. It will route the order to the nearest McDonald's. Um, so they're getting on 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 board, um, sort of t bridging the divide um, between the d digital and the real world. I think it's the future of e-commerce. We're not there yet. Um, it, it's it's clunky. Um, there are a few good examples. If you look at Oasis, Oasis is a is a great example to go and look at some of the brands that are doing that. Um, but but it's that's being refined, that's being developed. Um, in, in internet terms, think of we're at 1998, 1999 right now, and think of where we got by 2003, 2004, 2005. Um, that that's where it's going, um, and that those are some things that you'd be able to do with your with your land. Um, hope that helps. Awesome. Looks like. Uh... That's about I it. I think there was another. I thought I saw another one. Um, uh, is it po is uh, from Cripsan at eleven fifty seven asked a question? Is it possible to involve current soccer star players to promote the project beyond retired players? So that's a really good question, Cripsan. So um, current star players do come with another layer of complexity. Um, it, just because of, of um, contracts and, and limitations and exclusivity, et cetera. Um, they require, they involve often deals with their clubs. Um, so they're just more complex and more costly to do. Um, uh, it, it, that does not mean that we will not want to do that. We will, um, but it requires more capital, um, takes more time. Um, there is competition. Full, you know, full transparency. So rare is way ahead of us there. They, so rare raised six hundred and eighty-five million dollars last year um, at a four billion valuation, um, and they are um, they have they are doing deals with current players, and they're not building a, a metaverse game or RPG game or anything like we're doing. Um, but but they're so far ahead uh, on that. Um, so the answer is, it would be great. We would definitely love to do it. Um, we need a war chest um, to go after that. And, and I think we accomplish what we want to accomplish, which is massive exposure with the legends, right? So I think that, you know, uh, someone like Wayne Rooney with 30 million social media followers um, rivals pretty much any active player uh, other than maybe Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, so some of these legends have the same reach or more reach um, than current stars. Oh, and then, yeah, I see Alex added um, that we are in discussion with a couple of current players. We, we are in discussion through Entourage with a couple of current players, but they're, they're guys that we still view as legends. In other words, they have to be older and have proven that they are sort of, you know, among the top 100 greatest players of all time. Um, they have to be legends, right? So Buffon, Ozil, Modric um, are three that we are in touch with. And they're, they are current players. They're just old. See. Someone's typing that, right now. Okay. We're just over an hour. So um, for anyone that, that um, wants, this is being recorded and you'll be able to share it with other people um, if you think that they'd be interested in getting caught up. Um, Alex will figure out a way to get it 
posted or disseminated? We'll get this up uh, on YouTube, hopefully later <laughs> this afternoon. So what should everyone call you? Um, it, it, it ask how can you possibly define legends without mentioning Henrik Larson? Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that there there are I mean there there are a hundred guys I would say that 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 uh you know would be awesome. That you know. Good I, I think I think we should probably hold it there unless there I don't see any more questions coming in. We're we're just over an hour. Um, this has been great. I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, I hope you all have as well. We'll try to do some more AMAs a little more regularly now because we're really getting going on some stuff here. Um, so we'll, we'll try to do a little bit more um, regularly. Um, please, for anyone that's out there, uh, you know, um, I ask that you share what we're doing. Um, let folks know, invite them to come into our Discord and get to know us, et cetera. Um, obviously, it's a really exciting project. Um, you know, even even folks that are interested in social impact, et cetera, they even if they're not soccer people or whatever, might be interested in what we're doing. So, um, please let's let's grow the family. TJ, any anything um, before we sign off, or or George or Enigma? Um, I just wanted to say thanks for having us on. Uh, I I'm really excited for our partnership ahead and just everything we're going to do together. Awesome, awesome. All right, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone.